up. This is what I learned in my debits and credit accounting course. It goes up, let's say, by 600. And then the other side is going to go to uh, income. I'll just make up an income account. Income. And we'll say it's going to go to income, other primary income, boom, save it and close it. Now, it probably won't even let me record this because QuickBooks is going to say, hey, wait a sec, you don't even have a customer here. I can't let you record it because if you do, your sub ledger is going to be off for accounts receivable. So it's trying to help us out by not even letting us record it. See, it says when you use accounts receivable, you must choose a customer name. So we're going to be like, okay, maybe I'll just put a name in here. And so we'll just say, let's say this was customer number one. And I'll add a name and then I can save it and close it and say, ha, QuickBooks, there we have it. So if I go back on over here, so now if I, if I run this, then I can go into my accounts receivable and there's my transaction but it looks like a journal entry instead of an invoice you might say ah, it's not too bad but i'm going to say there's that and then the other side goes into the to the profit and loss uh report let's range change 010124 tab 123124 tab run into refreshing there's the 600 also in there as a, a journal entry if i go to the first tab because they forced me to put a name in it the sub ledger should be okay. So if I go to the tab to the right, right click it, double duplicate it so I can open up the, the AR form and go to the reports, close the boogie, ham boogie that is. And we'll say we're gonna go to the customer balance detail. So now we can see there's our customer. Everything else has an invoice. This one has a journal entry. So again, it's kind of funny looking there, but it still ties out because QuickBooks forced us to put a name so it could put it into the sub ledger. It's at the 588152, which ties out to the balance sheet 588152. Let's go to the first tab now and look at it internally. We go to the sales side of things and I go to my customers, for example, customer number one. And so, so there we have it here, but there's no little button that can say, I see the journal entry, but I don't see a button saying I can match a payment to it, right? Because the next thing that's going to happen is they're going to pay us that money, hopefully. And normally if you have the, the, you, you make a payment thing here and you apply it out. Now this one, it's still letting you apply it out. So that's actually nice that you still have the capacity uh, to apply it out here to the payment. But you can see where the where the issues come in when you don't when you don't use the forms, right? If I did this again and I said I got paid with a payment form, for example, and they paid me and I said, "Oh, I'm not going to enter a payment form. I'm going to enter a journal entry and say now I got the money which went into the checking account cash uh I went let's say checking checking account boom and it was for 600 and the other side is going out of accounts receivable accounts receivable then i'm going to have to put the name in here customer number one so it lets me record it and then i save and close that one so now you've got these now i've got this kind of two journal entries but they're not really linked together in here right that's gonna so that's kind of messy and if you do that over time it's going to get to be it's going to get to be messy if i look at my sub ledger report up top then i'm going to i'm going to run it and so now it didn't cancel each other out here i could see that it went in and out but i can't really cancel them out because i want those to disappear i want them to go away now you might be able to still to fix it you might be able to make a, a payment form uh and tie those two things out just out of curiosity uh let's check it out <laughs> So now you have these two journal entries that you could tie out and fix it. But you see the problem that I'm pointing at here. You want to use the forms because those are used for internal bookkeeping purposes. And you want to be able to use your accounting knowledge that will help you to be able to understand what is happening behind the scenes when these forms are entered. So you want to see what's happening behind the scenes with regards to the debits and credits to create the financials if you can 
or at least know them in increase and decrease format and then be able to see why the form is useful from an internal perspective one because it's good for data input and two because the forms will be linked together so you could track the information uh internally in the centers the customer center the vendor center and the employee center now remember the the other main place that you'll use the journal entries are adjusting entries at the end of the period which you might not do on the bookkeeping side of things because you might work with an accounting firm that's at least doing the taxes and they might be doing like adjusting entries at the end of the period or they might have to make adjustments to create the financial statements in accordance to either the accrual method possibly or to a tax basis in order to f to at least do the taxes or financial statements so then the, you have to the question is how do you make that process as smooth as possible do you give them the access they can do the journal entry or do you or do, do they give you the information and you enter the journal entries and so on and so we'll touch on that a little bit more as we work through the the longer practice problem and uh, we'll actually have a section on a section or a course on uh, adjusting entries if you're interested in that but if you're on the bookkeeper side of things what you need to have an understanding of is both sides need to know what the other side is doing so so that you can you can do what you need to do well and then they can do what they need to do well and we have a, a good a good divide between the splitting of the duties so we'll talk more about that in future presentations